In this lesson, we'll introduce the concept of a generalized probability density that includes Dirac delta functions, and we'll show how we use those to evaluate interval probabilities and expectations. Well, using the concept of the Dirac delta function, the probability density for a discrete random variable might look like this, where each arrow represents a Dirac delta function, and the associated probability represents its area. If these five delta functions represent the entire density, for example, then the sum of the associated probabilities would need to be equal to 1. Now, if we evaluate the cumulative distribution for the random variable that has this generalized probability density, we'd get 0 until we get to the point that includes the first delta function. Then we jump up by the probability p1, and we'd stay there until we get to the second delta function. And then we'd jump up by an amount equal to p2, and we'd stay there until we get to the next delta function, at which point we'd jump by an amount equal to p3. Then we'd, just keep, we'd keep doing this until we finally include the final delta function and attain the cumulative probability equal to 1. Now, because of the way we've defined the Dirac delta function, the probability that the random variable takes a value less than or equal to some value x is simply the integral of this generalized density up to the point x. And the probability that we're greater than x can be evaluated as the right tail integral. And if we include equality at the point x, though, we'll need to add in the probability that the random variable takes that particular value which, for example, would be equal to p3 if the point x corresponds to the location of the third delta function. Now, in some situations, we'll have a mixture of continuous and discrete random variables. Here, for example, is a situation where x has a continuous density, f sub y, that is scaled by some value q, and a discrete density located only at the point x0, and that's scaled by 1 minus q. This might correspond to a situation where, with probability q, the random variable x is a continuous random variable y that has this density, and with probability 1 minus q, it simply takes the value x0. Now, we could, of course, include more than one delta function, which would correspond to more than one possible discrete location. Now we can evaluate the expected value for this random variable in exactly the same way that we always evaluate expected values. And when we carry out the mathematics, we'd find that the result is equal to q times the expected value that we associate with the density y plus 1 minus q times the expected value for the discrete random variable, which can take only one value, so its expected value is x0. Likewise, we'd get a similar result for the expected value of any function of the random variable x. That is, the expected value of g of x would be q times the expected value of g that we associate with this continuous density, plus, in this case, 1 minus q times the function evaluated at the location x0. Now, to find the cumulative distribution for this random variable, we'd carry out the associated integral and find that the result is a superposition of the cumulative distribution for the density y and a unit step function located at the point x0. Now, as a specific example, let's suppose that y is a Bernoulli random variable with a success probability equal, that is, the probability that y is equal to 1 is equal to 0.4. And if y is equal to 1, then another random variable x is a Gaussian random variable with a mean equal to 3 and a standard deviation equal to 1. And finally, if y is equal to 0, then x takes the value 5. Now, the density for this situation would look like this, where we have a Gaussian density centered at 3. Now, it's going to be scaled by a value of 0.4. And we have a single Dirac delta function located at 5, but it's scaled by the probability that y is equal to 0, which is 0.6. Now, from that, we could evaluate the expected value for the random variable x as the conditional expected value for x when y is equal to 1 times the probability that y is equal to 1 
plus the conditional expected value for x when y is equal to 0 times the probability that y is equal to 0. Now the expected value for x when y is equal to 1 is the expected value for the Gaussian density, which is 3, and the probability that y is equal to 1 is 0.4. The expected value for x when y is equal to 0 is simply 5, and the probability that y is equal to 0 is 0 0.6, so that'll get us to 4.2. Likewise, we could find that the second moment for x is equal to 19. So that the variance would be 1.36. Now in a similar manner, the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to some value x is the conditional probability that the random variable is less than or equal to some value x, conditional on y being equal to 1 times the probability that y is equal to 1, plus the conditional probability that the random variable is less than or equal to x when y is equal to 0 times the probability that y is equal to 0. Now when x is less than 5, this would simply be the cumulative distribution function for the Gaussian random variable times 0 0.4, where here we're evaluating that cumulative distribution in terms of the cumulative distribution function for a standard normal random variable, phi, and when x is greater than or equal to 5, we would need to include the probability associated with the Dirac delta function. Now the corresponding probability that the random variable is greater than x would be 1 minus this probability. And in a similar manner, if we included equality, so we wanted the probability that x is greater than, the random variable x is greater than or equal to some value x, we'd need to include the probability associated with the Dirac delta function for the situation when x is less than or equal to 5. Now in general, we can gain great flexibility by utilizing Dirac delta functions in probability densities provided we are careful in following the conventions that we established for evaluating integrals that involve these generalized functions.